Thank you very much. Good. Can we begin? Yeah? Thank you. Now we have uh, concluded uh, a meeting of the 15th Intergovernmental Budget and Economic Council meeting. This morning we had an earlier meeting to agree on the division of revenue. The Treasury, together with the Commission on Revenue Allocation, did recommend that the shareable revenue due to the counties be at last year's, last financial year's level of 370 billion. After discussion and considering many factors, including the COVID situation in the country, including our debt levels as a nation, including the fact that the other alternative measures of raising revenue are not tenable. The Council, with the concurrence of the Council of Governors, to whom I am very grateful for this concession and agreement, we have approved last year's level of 370 billion be the amount that will be due to counties. And it is on the understanding that, unlike last year, Treasury will make every effort to ensure that the 370 billion shillings is paid to the counties in full. So far, the Treasury has shown indications that they are on course. The brief that the Council got that they are now dispersing monies for the months of October is a clear indication that they are in good standing to keep to the 370 billion this year, and we expect them to do the same next year. Again, let me appreciate all the stakeholders involved in appreciating the situation we are in as a country, the debt levels, the impending maybe drought situation, and agreeing that uh, we all tighten our belts to ensure that we do not exceed um, commitments that cannot be funded by revenues and other measures that government is undertaking in making sure that both national and county governments function. We have also agreed on a committee recommendation that was made by the Commission on Revenue Allocation on matters and, and the auditor and, com, um, and controller and also the controller of budget, auditor general and controller of budget, on matters to do with pending bills. And we have agreed that there will be a meeting chaired by the controller of budget that will bring together the auditor general, treasury, and the council of governors to first agree on what constitutes pending bills, on how pending bills can be managed so that they don't impede the delivery of government service by successive administrations, and where there are huge pending bills, a mechanism be recommended by the subcommittee on how that can be dealt with now 
and going into the future. We have also, for the very first time, approved borrowing by a sub-national government entity. Like Kipia County government applied through the issuance of an infrastructure bond for borrowing of up to one billion one hundred and six uh, one hundred and sixty million for various interventions by the county government. We have been working on a borrowing fr framework by the counties the last three years. And today, Laikipia County becomes the first county to meet the rigorous criteria that have been set out for counties to um, to meet so that they can borrow using the county government and the county assembly as a guarantee. This borrowing will of course naturally be subsequently guaranteed by the national government. But again, as a trailblazer, we all have congratulated Laikipia County for being the trailblazer and making it possible now and into the future for sub-national governments and county governments to be able to borrow. Again, our very big congratulations to the governor and to the county government of Laikipia. There are two bills that are pending in parliament, which we have undertaken through my office that I will consult with the speaker and the leaders of majority in both houses, the own source of revenue bill and the conditional grant bill that, is, that are both in parliament so that this can be fast tracked for purposes of making it possible for us to have a legal framework to uh, facilitate the efficient use of conditional grants and a proper framework that will give county governments a mechanism and a legal uh, framework for them to carry out on source of revenue collections. Sharing of levies and royalties natural resources. and the National Treasury will agree on a framework with the relevant ministries on the amounts of amounts and on the out of natural resources. This agreement shall then facilitate treasure to be able to release royalties the county wide framework and possibly a legislative a legislative framework on how Royalties and fees to communities will be communities and the application processes of who and what constitutes communities. We have um, agreed that the privatization of government-owned sugar mills that 
that had been in the works for the last almost 10 years that has been developed, bedeviled by legal challenges. And at the moment, that whole process has stalled. We have agreed that uh, because we are believers in the rule of law, that there cannot be any process that proceeds up and until the various court cases are determined. We have also uh, asked the judiciary who are represented in this council to assist in ensuring that the legal challenges that are facing this privatization exercise are fast tracked by the judiciary in the interest of the counties, the farmers, and all the other stakeholders that are currently in limbo as this process of privatization is not concluded. Um, we have also uh, determined that going forward, uh, the vocational training centers that are under the county governments which have been beneficiaries of grants, conditional grants by the national government. Going forward, all the conditional grants for vocational training centers shall cease to be conditional grants, but they shall form part of the shareable revenue and will be available to counties um, directly as budget items that then they can appropriate in making sure that the youth polytechnics and the vocational centers are working. We did also, a presentation was made by the Treasury on both the medium term debt strategy and the budget policy statement for this year. Both of them were adopted, realizing that there wasn't much room for adjustments in the light of the economic situation we are all in, not just as Kenya, but as the globe with the advent of the COVID-19 pandemic and all the attendant issues that currently um, our country faces, including the debt levels and also the drought situation. This is just a preview of uh, the items that we discussed in IBEC, and we thought it is necessary for us to bring it to the attention of the country, uh, the agreements and uh, the considerations that have been made. And I want to thank all the stakeholders for their participation and for their contribution in allowing us to come to a consensus on most of the issues that we agreed with. Maybe I will take this time to ask uh, the, on behalf of the council, uh, my good brother Nderitu, to say some, <coughs> some comments. Well, I thank you very much uh, uh, indeed, Your Excellency. Um, uh, frankly, there isn't really much to add. Um, as you have uh, informed the nation, these are the matters we discussed and agreed I think the only thing I can do is to congratulate you um, on, on your leadership of the Council uh, in ensuring that we move forward uh, together. I know, Your Excellency, some members of the Fourth Estate perhaps may be disappointed because some people feared that perhaps the meeting will be stormy and so on. Um, and I want to thank you, Your Excellency. Uh, for proving to all of us and to the country that uh, we may have differences of opinion about a variety of issues. Um, however, we as leaders of Kenya in this time, we must always, in the execution of the mandates of our offices, be able to work uh, beyond, over and above any 
differences of political opinion uh, or differences even indeed on interpretation of technical data. So I thank you very much indeed, uh, Your Excellency, uh, and I think that uh, it's a clear demonstration that uh, as a team of leaders, we can be able to move forward um, uh, together uh, when uh, duty calls. So thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. And mine is just to confirm that what we did today was in the interest of the greater good of the country. And I confirm that between the Commission on Revenue and Allocation and the National Treasury, we had consensus, and this is the consensus that came out of the Council. Thank you very much. Great. I think that's it. Uh, uh, maybe I can take one or two questions only on matters to do with IBEC. The other issues, we can discuss them in another forum. Well, thank you very much. My name is Kenneth Murini from NTV. And the question of uh, borrowing by the countries, it is a matter that is still a great area. Probably you could expand the matters of uh, how this framework will be. There has been a lot of speculation of who could be able to guarantee a loan. But in the case of Nigeria, you've been able to say that uh, the country certainly will be able to guarantee the law. Probably on that matter, and also you can confirm on the fact that we've got time to do the But as to believe, we're not part of the discussion, so that we can discuss another time. Uh, on the issue of uh, borrowing, again, as I have said, we have been in discussion. We have uh, worked on the regulations. The PFM Act has been, uh, the regulations under the PFM Act have been amended accordingly. And therefore, there is now a legal framework for sub-national governments to borrow. It's a big uh, topic, it's a big subject, and uh, I think the opportunity presented by Laikipia County as the first ever county to borrow under this framework will be um, the platform upon which we can assess going into the future how sub-national governments can indeed borrow and how efficient or effective. And I did challenge the governor of uh, Laikipia that we are going to work with him to assist him so that this borrowing becomes a success and sets the stage for more county governments to do what they plan to do using not just resources that we have given, uh, we have shared with them from the shareable revenue or indeed from own sources of revenue, but also from uh, borrowing. This is, I think, a welcome development. It is another window that we can use to accelerate infrastructure and matters that can stimulate productivity in counties. The law, for your information, is very specific on what is allowable for borrowing. You cannot borrow to pay recurrent expenditure. You cannot borrow to pay uh, items that are not critical. The borrowing can only be on areas of productivity, where the productivity of the county is going to be um, enhanced and, and made better. So again, I think we should all uh, give uh, Laikipia County um, our congratulations for making it this far, but also uh, tell them that the whole country is waiting and, 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 and they, they have no choice but to succeed. Indeed. That again becomes a very huge responsibility on the part of Laikipia County. Indeed. One more, yes. Thank you, I'm Emma from Echo Television. Thank you. So if we, about three weeks ago when CRA was actually giving out these statistics, the chairperson said that it was a 2022 table of collection that was actually come up for the revenue collection in the country. Maybe at the second mark in command, what would be the best way to actually increase or maintain the revenue collection in the country during it 
it is part of what informed the discussion and part of the consideration that was made in accepting that we keep to the levels of sharing for last year. And we did actually interrogate ourselves in making sure that the swings, when we have an election of revenues going down and up, is something that concerns all of us. And going into the future, we must, all of us, make the elections less acrimonious, less controversial, so that we can keep the country moving, even when we have an election, it doesn't affect our performance or the performance of our economy. It is not something that's going to happen in one election, but uh, it is something that uh, we all look forward to as we try and manage our democracy. Thank you very much, uh, good people. You are the best, yes? There is a question that was brought up by the Managerity Committee about the acrimony. You think that is what the meeting was? How have you been able to put up the meeting and update it? And also, it has been quite a while since we saw you hosting. Where the meeting was? Saying that there were fears from some of his colleagues about acrimony. No, it's it. <laughs> I haven't started the campaign because uh, the campaign period is not yet announced by IBC. What you have seen me do is uh, to do what my mandate, speaking to people, understanding their issues, uh, assessing the extent of our uh, government programs, how far the roads are, and uh, receiving feedback from the public. You may want to know that uh, the aspect of public participation is no longer a sterile provision in our constitution. The public constitute a very big uh, constituency in the performance of government. And uh, feedback from the public constitutes public participation, and it is a constitutional provision. So when you see me uh, in various parts of the country, it is because I am the deputy president, and we have government projects all over the country. And uh, I, I would, as an officer of government, want to benefit from feedback by the public. When the campaigns kick in, we will go to the campaigns. For now, until the IBC announces matters uh, campaigns, for now we are doing government work. Maybe we, you haven't seen me in a tie, and uh, I think that's the problem. You know, government work can be done even without a tie. You know, you, do, you must not dress formally the way I, I think the only problem you have is that I have been working without being formally dressed. So... And, and uh, there is no provision anywhere in law that you must be in a tie to carry out government uh, responsibilities. So thank you very much. Have a good afternoon, gentlemen. <laughs>